Welcome back. Are you ready for the main event? Today we're going to talk about filling out your Form 1023, your IRS Form 1023 or 1023-EZ. It is your official application for tax-exempt status from the IRS. I'm Mark Lida from Lida Law Firm. Let's get started. There are different types of nonprofits, and some won't have to fill out a 1023 or a 1023EZ. Some will have different forms, but this whole playlist is geared generally toward your more traditional types of nonprofits, whether they be private foundations or public charities. So a traditional 501c3 nonprofit fills out a form 1023 from the IRS in order to achieve tax-exempt status. If you are a smaller nonprofit, you may be able to use IRS Form 1023-EZ, which is easier. So we won't be able to cover all of the form or all of the application in this one video. But what I'd like to do is just touch on a few important points for you to keep in mind as you embark on your journey in applying for tax-exempt status. First thing, you've got to do it within 27 months of your founding. If you miss that 27-month deadline, you can uh, tell the IRS that you had some good reason for missing it and they may grant you an exception. But generally, you've got to file your 1023 within 27 months of your founding. Kind of a random number of months, but so be it. Next thing to keep in mind, a Form 1023 is a process, not just a form. So on the Form 1023, you will list your narrative, like we talked about in this uh, playlist. You will list your budget, like we talked about in this playlist. You will attach your bylaws, like we talked about in this play lot playlist. You will include bios for your officers and your members of the board of directors, like we talked about in this playlist. So going through that whole process and doing all of that planning as a founder, it isn't just a legal form, it's a founder planning document where you really, um, you really memorialize all of the hard work you've been doing to plan this nonprofit. So it's not just a form, it's a process. The next thing to keep in mind about the 1023 is it's just a form. Like, don't be intimidated. Don't uh, become so overwhelmed by this massive legal document that it actually stops you in your tracks and you're not able to move forward with your nonprofit and do all the good work you've been planning on doing. It's just a form. Take it one bite at a time, one page at a time. You've done all the legwork already. If you haven't done the legwork yet, the form will be a good roadmap for what additional legwork you have to do. So don't be too intimidated. It's just a form. Next, I want to talk about the difference between the 1023 and the 1023 EZ. Main difference is the 1023 EZ is easier. And you qualify for a 1023 EZ if your nonprofit has under, at the time of this video being recorded, under $50,000 in annual gross income or revenue, uh, donations, what have you, into your nonprofit, and assets under a quarter million dollars. So that's the eligibility for 1023EZ. Well, why would you want to do 1023EZ? Well, it's shorter. You can now fill out both online. It used to be that the 1023EZ was online, whereas you had to mail in a hard copy of the 1023, but now they're both online. But still, the 1023 is shorter, which makes it easier. They require less information, less documentation. It's also cheaper. At the time of this recording, I believe the filing fee is $275 for a 1023EZ, and it's $600 for a 1023. Perhaps most importantly, it's usually a quicker turnaround time from the IRS. They expect turnaround times approving your status within about three months for a 1023 easy as compared with six months for the 1023. If you do this early on in your nonprofit's life, you may be more likely to qualify to do a 1023 easy because you probably have less money and you might expect to have less money 
for the next couple of years. A couple more quick hits before uh, we end this video. One is to remember you've still got to file your taxes each year, your IRS Form 990, even if you haven't applied yet for your tax exempt status, like any other organization or person or business, you still have to file your taxes. And the other thing to keep in mind is that as long as you file by that 27 month deadline, if you are approved, your uh, approval will go back to the time of your founding. It will be retroactive. Final thing to keep in mind is that what happens if you're not approved? Uh, for tax exempt status under your IRS 1023. Well, more likely than not, what the IRS will do is actually just come back to you for more information. So it won't be an outright denial, most likely. It'll be, hey, can you send us this other documentation? There's some sort of office action where we want to see something else from you, or maybe you could tweak something. So the IRS is made up of people trying to do the right thing, and they will try to make it clear for you what they need from you so that you can get back on the pathway to tax exempt status for your nonprofit. Thanks for watching. Please remember to click like and subscribe to help keep legal education free and accessible for nonprofits and small business owners. I'd also like to invite you to listen to our podcast about mentorship. It's called Coffee, Lunch, Beer, and it's available wherever you get your podcasts. Mm -hmm.